Hello everybody. Welcome to Regular People Extra History. We're going to be looking at everyday historical items, vintage things that have been abandoned and lost to the public at large, giving a little bit of extra history about regular folks like you and me from another time. Um, please like and subscribe for a lot more nifty stuff. If you like looking at old photos, vintage documents, antique portraits, uh, junk drawer lots, and so much more, I have a lot to share, <laughs> okay? As you can see from just this one file box, there's a lot in there. Um, so just please enjoy this and check out more videos. This is the first part of a series that I'm gonna call the Neo Show Files. And these files, they come from Neo Show, Missouri, which is a small town in Missouri. Um, right now it's got about twice the population that it did when these files were generated, which was in the 30s, 40s, and 50s for the most part. Now some of these pictures are later than that. As you can see, some of them look like they go into the 70s. But this right here, I had two of these. And these are what we call the Wayne V. Slankard papers. Now, when I walked into a thrift store in Kansas City, Missouri, and I saw these file boxes up on a shelf, I really had no idea what I was looking at. I saw some dates, but the first thing that really drew my attention was that the fact that these papers were all from Neosho, Missouri, and mostly the papers of Wayne V. Slankard, and on very fine onion paper copies, file copies. And it turned out that Wayne V. Slankard was a very important, at the time, politician in Neosho, Missouri. Now, I saw these and the first thing that I noticed was that there were payments clipped to these like this and each of them had a silver certificate tucked onto the envelope. Now the thrift store had two of these large boxes here and two cardboard boxes full of these papers and ephemera and they wanted seven dollars for it. In this first file box I immediately found eight silver certificates that were worth more than the seven bucks so I bought them for my husband and he took the silver certificates out for his collection but then we started reading these. And apparently, Wayne Slankard was in the prosecuting attorney's office for Neosho, Missouri. And these are all his files. Copies of his official business, bills, all sorts of lovely personal correspondence as well as official correspondence. A clerk of the circuit court from Berry County, Cassville, to prosecuting attorney, the Honorable Wayne Slanker. And, um, you know, it's just his business that this man did on a regular basis. It's also his legal business as an attorney with copies of all of his cases and there's just literally, I would wager to say, thousands and thousands of affidavits, file copies, 
Now, there are copies of his correspondence to other people, which his secretary most likely made these copies of to put in his file. But there's, of course, his personal correspondence that he received from others as well. Now, of course, in this first video, I'm not going to really get into a whole lot. But I will say they're really interesting. And I know a lot of you guys like to watch new legal cases. And if you're interested in me going through more of these, I will. But this is like a hold on a deal. A holds check from 1945. And there's lists of different club members. The Seneca Commercial Club that meets the first Monday night of each month in Newton County. That's from September 28th, 1946. Um, anyway, it is so interesting to me, and I'm absolutely fascinated by old scraps of paper, but this was just a gold mine. To me, it was a gold mine of information about a point in time, and the other thing that fascinated me was how this volume of information came into my possession and why I'd never heard of Wayne V. Slanker um, because like I say I have read through so many of these and possibly not even all of them yet because like I say I do have two boxes but they're just so interesting and I could tell you a few things just an over glance of things that stood out to me. Um, in one of these papers, he talks about buying a sled for a poor child in the community whose family could not afford to buy one and, and how a community club banded together to help raise money to buy another little boy a wagon and um, then there are things like wartime memos back and forth between him and the State Department. Um, at the time, this gentleman, who was a well-off politician, I can only imagine. I mean, he obviously was doing pretty well. And um, at the time... He offered his services as a spy to the war effort. And there is a letter among the correspondents that thanks him for his application to work on behalf of the war effort. Um, and it turns him down because they need him in the O show. And I won't spoil it for you. I will make this only a short video to introduce you guys to this mass of paperwork. And if you're interested, tell me. And I will read them. There's a letter uh, to the Bertram Brothers Motor Company in Granby, Missouri. From 1949. Now these all stop suddenly. <clears throat> and these were able to be purchased in a thrift store, which means somebody dumped these. <clears throat> which uh, usually means either there is not family left to take care of them anymore, like the last person dies out. Or, for whatever reason, the family doesn't get along. And maybe they want to forget that this guy ever existed. Um, I'd like to think the former, because this is so interesting. Even if he was a brother-in-law that I didn't like, I would keep it. Um, maybe it's because I'm from Missouri, and I'm fascinated with Missouri history. Um, but if you're fascinated with Missouri history, and you would like to see more of this, and have me read some of these letters out for you, 
show you more of these pictures, please hit that subscribe button. Comment down below on what you think I should do. Um, should I make scans of these and share them with you? Um, should I continue to do this and perhaps go through them more slowly? Are there legal ramifications for me going through these? I don't know. There are <clears throat> investigations that were ongoing in the 40s. There are criminal cases. There are adoption records. And I will tell you that I did do research and I do know that I did most of what I could possibly do to return these to the family of Mr. Schlenker. But I was unable to find someone. And I even went as far as to contact people in the Osho. And the best I could come up with was to find someone that knew his family back in the 40s and 50s. Um, but she's a very elderly lady, and unfortunately I did not get to meet with her personally, but she really wanted to see these files, and I just never made it to Neo Show in time. And now that I'm getting older myself, I'm like, what happens if something happens to me? And I don't share these with you. They're gonna end up right back in a thrift store. So, you know, if you're interested in these kind of receipts and old pictures, um, and I hate to spoil it for you, but I know, I know why <laughs> this picture, these two pictures right here <clears throat> are pictures of the reason why the prosecuting attorney's file boxes were just packed up in whole with payments and everything and given to the man's family, probably right after this incident. This is the site of the plane crash that killed Wayne V. Slankard. And uh, this is the memorial set up for the victims. And of course, you can tell these are older photos. And I can tell you more details about that and Wayne and all these papers in future videos if you're interested. And please comment down below if you have any suggestions on the best way to go about piles and files and files. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for checking this out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And this is just a little bit of regular people with some extra history.